Sybil Ludington's Midnight Ride. April 26, 1777, Patterson, New York. The night began with the sounds of hoofbeats and shouting. The noises surprised the whole surprised the whole Ludington family. There were no neighbors close by. Who could be visiting on such a cold, rainy night? Sybil Ludington was 16 years old. She was the oldest of eight brothers and sisters. Sybil worked hard helping her mother take care of the younger children. She helped with spinning and knitting and weaving and sewing. She gardened and cooked and baked. She made soup and candles and butter. Everything the family needed was made right at home. When Sybil had finished her chores, she loved to go riding on Star. Star was a big horse with a white patch in the middle of his forehead. The shape of the patch gave him his name. Star was just one year old, not yet fully grown. Sybil had trained him herself. She loved to gallop through the fields with the wind in her face and her hair flying out behind her. On that rainy night in April, everyone in the Ludington house was very happy. Sybil's father had just returned home for a visit. A big bright fire crackled in the fireplace. Colonial Henry Ludington was telling a story to his other children. Sybil's mother, Abigail, and her sister, Rebecca, cleaned away the supper dishes. Sybil was getting the littler ones ready for bed. Everyone stopped and stared at the front door as hoofbeats came to a sudden stop in the yard. Colonial Ludington got up to answer the knocking. A messenger stood in the doorway. His uniform was soaked with rain. He shivered with cold. He had come to tell Colonial Ludington that 2,000 British soldiers had attacked the town of Danbury, Connecticut. The British were burning warehouses filled with food and clothing for American soldiers. They were setting fire to Danbury houses. There were no American soldiers near Danbury to protect the town. General George Washington and his army were in Peekskill, New York, but Peekskill was a two-day march from Danbury. Colonial Ludington was only a half a day away but his soldiers were home on their farms. The farms were spread out over 40 miles of countryside. Someone would have to ride through the night to call the men to action, but who should go? Colonial Ludington must stay at home to give orders to his soldiers as they gathered. I'll go, said the messenger, but everyone could see that he was too cold, too wet, and too tired. No, said Sybil. I'll go. It's too, it's much too dangerous, said her mother. The night is cold and wet and dark. You'll get lost in the woods. I can ride as well as anyone, said Sybil. And I know where. And all fathers, soldiers, live. There, mi there might be British soldiers out there, said her mother. Worse still, the woods are full of outlaws. Mother, said Sybil. There is no one else who can go. The child is right, said her father. There was no one else. Her mother had to agree. Colonial Ludington went to saddle up Star. Miss Ludington got her warm woolen cloak. She wrapped it around her daughter. Cybul picked up a big stick. She would use it to knock on doors to wake up sleeping families. If she had to, she would use it to keep away outlaws. Don't worry, said Sybil. I'll be fine. She sounded much braver than she felt. Sybil mounted Star. She urged the horse into a gallop down the dirt road. Soon, she could no longer see the lights from her house. Sybil had never been away from home by herself after dark. There was no moon out that night. Clouds blocked the light of the stars. By daylight, Sybil knew all the forest and fields, but in the dark of night, the land was full of mysterious shapes and strange shadows. Sybil was surprised by how, how lonely she felt. The rain was steady and hard. Only a mile from home, raindrops started to see seep through Sybil's cloak. Her hair was soaked. Rain ran down her face. Then Sybil saw a flicker of candlelight through the darkness. It was the first farmhouse on her route. She slowed Star to a trot. 
and banged on the door with her stick. The British are burning Danbury, she, said, she shouted. Meet at Colonial Ludington's house. Then she urged Star on. Back into the dark woods, she had no time to waste. Sabul so stopped at house after house. She stayed just long enough to call out her message and listen for an answer. Then she would ride on into the night. The cold rain made Sybul's teeth chatter. Her fingers felt stiff on the reins. She woke so many families that she lost count. As she rode toward the village of Carmel, she saw a strange orange glow in the eastern sky. It was the light from the fires of Danbury, 20 miles away. Sybil thought about how she would feel in her own home were burning. We must hurry, Star, she whispered. Sybil knew that she did not have to knock at every door. Neighbors would run to tell one another. They would make sure that all soldiers heard the news. Sybil rode into Carmel, calling out her message. Doors flew open at the sound of her shouts. As she rode away, the bell on the meeting house rang out. The bell would take the townspeople and call them to action. Sybil swung Star West toward Mahopic Pond. Here, there were long, dark distances between the farmhouses. The narrow paths in the woods were hard to follow. Sometimes, Sybil had to get down and lead Star to find their way. Just a few weeks earlier, the ground had been covered with snow, but with the spring thaw and the days of rain, there was mud everywhere. The mud seemed to grab at Sybil's boots. Her stockings were wet, her toes ached with cold. Old slippery leaves covered the forest floor. A few times, Star tripped and Sybil almost tumbled to the ground, but she kept going. She had to help save Danbury. It was early spring and the trees were still bare. The branches of the big oaks and maples stretched into the sky. Like giant sticks, they waved in the wind and rain. Sometimes the branches rubbed together. They made a creaky, ghost-like noise. Sybil closed her eyes and thought of the new leaves of spring, only a week or two away. Her muscles ache. Her throat was sore from shouting. She thought of the warm fire she had left behind at home. She wished for a cup of tea and for the sound of her mother's voice. Sybil patted Star's neck. She told him over and over again what a good horse he was. Whispering to Star made Sybil feel better. It was hard to stay brave. Every time a deer leaped through the woods or an owl hooted from a tree, Sybil's heart would pound. Was it British soldiers? Could it be outlaws? Sybil took a deep breath to calm herself. She wrinkled her nose at the sharp smells of mud and wet leaves and wet clothes and wet horse. She was sure that those smells would always remind her of this midnight ride. Suddenly, Sybil heard the sounds of voices and laughter. Just ahead, three men hunched over a small campfire. They were cooking a rabbit. Their clothes were ragged and torn. They looked like they had been living in the woods for a long time. Sybil knew that they were outlaws. They stole horses and cattle from both sides and sold them to either army. If they got their hands on Star, Sybil would never see him again. Luckily, Sybil saw the outlaws, outlaws before the, they spotted her. She slid off Star, then she walked him very slowly through the woods. They made a big half circle around the campfire. Sybil gently stroked Star's muzzle. She whispered, hush, hush. The rain and wind covered the sounds of their footsteps. Finally, they were safely past the outlaw's camp. When Sybil reached Stormville, she was surprised to see lights and to hear voices. There, people had already heard the news. They were gathering out on the village green. Many voices cheered for Sybil as Star galloped on. Our work is done, Star, Sybil said. She leaned over and hugged his neck. Bring us home. Finally, Sybil arrived back home after many cold, wet miles. This time, the faint glow in the east was the dawn of a new day. 
400 soldiers had gathered in the field in front of the Ludington house. The fifes and drums played. The music seemed to be welcoming Sybil home. Sybil slid from Star's back into her father's arms. She was suddenly so tired and relieved that she started to cry. While Sybil slept, while Sybil... While Sybil slept, Colonial Ludington and his men marched toward Danbury. They joined other sol American soldiers on the way. The Americans were badly outnumbered, but the British were taken by surprise. The Americans forced them back to the ships that had brought them. Some people think that it wasn't for, if it wasn't for Colonial Ludington soldiers, the British could have marched to Peekskill. There, they would have attacked General Washington's army. That would have changed the story of the Revolutionary War. And that could have changed the history of the United States.